Today in the news, we got two possible new GPUs, some Threadripper and a weird circle. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. In the last few months, all we kept hearing about was their new-ish line of GPUs with the 2060, 2070, and 2080 Supers. We even thought for a while that we would get a 2080 Ti Super, although that turned out to be a false alarm. But what if instead of looking up in the stack, we looked down towards the GTX series? Well, according to mydrivers.com, that's exactly where NVIDIA is supposedly going. Now, this is a rumor, so as per usual, a crystalline structure of sodium chloride would be advised. According to mydrivers.com, NVIDIA is ready to pad up the lower end GPUs with two different cards. First is the GTX 1660 Super. This upgraded Super version will apparently not change its core count, but rather just change the memory type to align better with higher end models, which means GDDR6 memory at 14 gigabits per second compared to GDDR5 at 8 gigabits per second for the regular 1660. Now this to me sounds a little bit weird. This would mean that the 1660 Super would have faster memory than the 1660 Ti since the Ti actually has 12 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory. I mean we know it's possible. Both use the same TU116 die so yes they can do it but I'm not sure if I can count on that happening. The second GPU is one that has been talked about a bit in the last few months the 1650 Ti. That chip would take full advantage of the TU117 die, although we don't know what the specs of this chip would be. Since the non-TI version is at 896 CUDA cores, we can only assume that the TI should stick to 1024 to 1152 with the same GDDR5 memory. Apparently, those cards will just join the current lineup instead of replacing one of them. This would allow Nvidia to touch on all of the price points available before AMD AMD fires up Navi 14, aka the rumored RX 5500 and 5600, or actually probably after AMD pulls the trigger if history serves us right. In Threadripper news, we now have more information about the different chipsets and their use with the third generation Ryzen Threadripper processors. According to an AMD Eternal document received by Gamers Nexus, the chipsets or motherboard platforms will be split in two, a standard high-end desktop platform or HEDT and a workstation grade one. It's quite an interesting distinction since I always saw HEDT as being workstation grade equipment, but the specs of these new chipsets do differ quite a bit. Let's look at the differences. The TRX4 platform is the HEDT one. Like we theorized, it will support quad channel memory, while the WRX8 version will move up to eight channels. With the TRX4, you get two DIMMs per channels, and with the WRX8, you get one DIMM per channel, so don't expect to see boards with 16 slots like with an AMD Epic system. The WRX8 boards will also support R DIMMs and LR DIMMs, which offer compatibility with super high capacity registered memory. The TRX4 supports unregistered DIMMs. The last distinction in memory is overclocking with the TRX4 offering support where the WRX8 does not. In terms of PCIe Gen 4 lanes, it looks like the TRX4 will support 64 lanes and the WRX8 will likely match EPIC with up to 128 lanes. TDP requirements for both motherboards is at 280 watts and that might give us a hint at the core count possible with Threadripper 3. An EPIC 7702P at 64 cores has a TDP of 200 watts, so we have some headroom to clock Threadripper higher and still stay under 280 watts. That means a 64 core Threadripper chip might be a thing. I'd lean more towards 48, but who knows. Anyways, rumor is AMD is preparing for launches in October, and I'm sure that that's when we'll see third gen Threadripper. Hopefully with a less ridiculous ad than this. I mean, seriously, I still don't understand what was going on through their heads. Next up, if you wanted to get sweaty with friends, Nintendo's got you covered. Wow, that was a weird thing to say. Anyways, over the weekend, Nintendo introduced a brand new accessory coming up for the Switch. It doesn't have a name yet, but uh, it's this circular contraption that you can squeeze or pull. The Joy-Cons snap on top of it, and it looks like it's going to be an exercised focused accessory. It also comes with a strap to attach a Joy-Con to your thigh. 
Yeah. Nintendo had a big fitness accessory craze with the Wii, but a lot less with the Wii U. With all the gyros and sensors on the Joy-Cons now, I guess we should have seen this coming. Still, it's a really weird one. I mean, all you see in the trailer is just groups of people squeezing the thing, and most of the action could be done without it. We'll get more info on this accessory on the 12th, so I'll try to squeeze it into Friday's video. See what I did there? Yes, next. Lastly, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to switch things up a bit for the last video of every week. If and when there isn't enough news for me to cover at the end of the week, I'm going to go through and see if any of the stories we talked about had either updates or you guys had some interesting comments to talk about. This would likely be a Friday or a weekend episode. As for the live streams I talked about on my second channel, uh, stay tuned. I'm getting ready for them. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions, drop it down below as usual you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel stay frosty my dudes and i'll see you on the next one this video was brought to you by the snows foundation a funny dude some news and some t-shirts thank you very much